This is part 8 of Link to SQL tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the concept of lazy loading in Link to SQL. So what's lazy loading? Lazy loading means the related entities are not loaded until we iterate through them or data bind them. By default, Link to SQL loads related entities by using lazy loading. In the example here, there is a one-to-many relationship between department and employee entities. A department can have one or more employees. When departments are loaded, the related entities, that is the employee entities, are not loaded. Employee entities are only loaded when we iterate through the employee objects belonging to each given department. Let's prove this with an example. Let's first prove this with a console application. So what we want to do is print the department name followed by all the employee names belonging to each department. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. Here we've got the two tables, departments and employees. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. So here I have a new console application. To this project, let's add a new item. And we want to add a link to SQL classes. Let's name this sample.dbml. Now let's go to Server Explorer, drag and drop these two tables onto the designer surface. So here we've got the entities. Now let's go to program.cs file. Let's create an instance of the sample data context. Let's call it db context. Now let's use a for each loop, loop through each department, and then print the department name. Now, in addition to printing the department name, we also want to log the SQL query that is generated onto the console screen. And in order to do that, we are going to make use of the log property of the data context object. All right, let's run this and inspect the output. Notice we have all the department names printed. Look at this, you know, there's only one query which loads all the departments. Now we don't have any queries to load the related entities, that is the employee entities. Now at the moment within the code, we are not looping through the employees belonging to each department. That's why the related entities, that is the employee entities are not loaded. Now let's try to loop through the employee objects belonging to each department and then print the first and last name of each employee. So let's use another for each loop. So for each employee in department dot employees. So first let's print a tab space and then let's print the employee first name, give a space and then print the employee last name. All right, now let's go ahead and run this. Now look at the output. So there's one query to load all the departments. And look at this, we have the IT department name printed. And when we try to iterate through the employee objects belonging to IT department, that's when another query is issued and all the related employee entities are loaded. Look at the value for the parameter, it is one. So the IT department ID is one and then it prints the HR department, and then there is another query to load the employees belonging to the HR department. And then we have the payroll department printed, and then another query to load the employees belonging to the payroll department. So overall, we have one query to load the departments, and then three more queries to load the employees belonging to each department. So this is lazy loading. Only when we need the related entities, that's when you know those entities are loaded. So they are loaded on demand. So now here we have looked at an example of a console application where we are iterating through the items and on demand the related entities are loaded. Let's look at another example of web application. So here we are doing data binding and the same will be the case. When we data bind the related entities, only then they will be loaded, otherwise they won't be loaded. And let's prove this with a web application. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So here I have a new empty ASP.NET web application project. To this project, let's add a new item and we want to add a link to SQL classes. Let's name this sample.dbml. And let's drag and drop the tables onto the designer surface. To this project, let's add a web form. And on the web form, we need a grid view control. So let's drag and drop that from the toolbox. So the first thing that we want to do is specify the columns that we want to display within the grid view control. 
So we want a bound field which is going to display the department name. So header text equals, let's specify that as department. And data field is going to be the name of the department. And we are also going to have another template field here. And template field is going to have an item template. And inside this item template, we are going to have another grid view control. So this grid view control is going to display the first and last name of employees belonging to each department. First of all, on the outer grid view control, we also need to turn off auto generate columns. And we need to do the same thing for this inner grid view control as well. All right. Now let's specify the columns. So we want two bound columns here. So let's copy and paste that. So in the first column, we are going to display first name. Data field is going to be first name. And in the second bound column, we are going to display last name. All right. Now let's go to the code behind file. Within the page load event, let's create an instance of sample data context. Let's call this DB context. DB context dot departments is going to give us all the departments which we want to bind with the grid view one control. And let's call data bind method. All right, now let's go back to the ASPX page and let's flip to the design mode and let's actually auto format this and then choose this brown sugar color scheme so that it looks a little nice. Now one more thing that we need to do is for the second column let's specify employees as the header text. So for the template field let's specify a header text. All right and one more thing that we need to specify is for the second grid view control we need to set the data source so the data source for the second grid view control is going to be angle bracket percentage hash eval. So there's going to be employees property. The department object is going to have employees property. So that's what is going to serve the data for this grid view control. All right. All right. So with all these changes, let's run the web form. And one more thing that we need to do is we want to log the queries onto the web form. And in order to do that, we are going to use the log property. So dbcontext.log equals response.output. All right, with these changes, let's run this now. So we should get both the department and employees belonging to each department printed. So we have the department and employees belonging to each department. Now look at the query that is generated. So this first query right here is going to load all the departments. And then notice that we have got three more select queries, you know, which are going to load the employees belonging to each department. So that's going to load for the IT department. And this is the select statement for HR department and the final select statement for payroll department. All right, now let's try, turn off the second grid view control binding. So let's go to the project and then let's remove this data source. So when we don't have this data source, then you know the second grid view control will not be bound to data. Now let us look at what's going to happen. Look at this now, only departments are you know, displayed within the grid view control. And look at the query. There's only one query which loads the departments. Now, since we are not data binding the related entities, there are no queries. You know, the related entities are not loaded. So this is lazy loading. By default, you know, the related entities are not loaded. They are only loaded on demand when we iterate through the items or when we data bind those related items. In our next video, we'll see how to change this def default behavior and then eager load related entities. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.